Gladys, I said. Oh, yeah, get you a fucking cup of coffee. Well, just, just take that coffee over there and heat it up. Oh, mm-hmm. Gladys, you, you need more than ten seconds to heat coffee up. Mm-hmm. Ten seconds is good. Ten seconds is not good. Ten seconds is fine. Ten seconds is not fine. Mm, uh, it's going to be cold. Mm, mm. Hot, hot. How, how the hell did you get it so hot in 10 seconds? I must have an atomic finger or something. All right. <clears throat> Let's get back to work. All right. Okay. We just left off telling you how Mushka had a voice for everything, even his beard. Let's get back to the fast-paced action. Like I said, Mushka had a voice for everything. What do you mean, everything had a voice? Even his nose? Oh, God. To Mushka, his nose was a central part of life. He spent more time blowing it, picking it, wiping it than anyone I ever met. But how did it have a voice? Well, when his face got stuffy, and with all the dust all over the place, that really wasn't hard to accomplish... He'd flare out his nostrils and have his nose say, I'm suffocating! Mr. Nozel can't breathe! Then he'd blow his nose and breathe in deep. Then he'd say, How it smells in here! That's that smell! Mr. Nozel smells bad! Then he'd flare out his nostrils again and scream, It's me, Mr. Mucus! We're here! We're here inside Mr. Nozel! Like I said, he had a voice for everything. Mr. Nozel? Well, he had to call it something. Like he called his dandruff God's children. Oh, Michal, that's disgusting. Yeah, but funny too. He'd always be playing with his beard. It was like it was alive and he was trying to keep it calm. His his fingers would always be in there scratching, pulling, rubbing. <laughs> Ay, the smell. All right, anyway, when he did that, Flakes of dandruff would fall out onto his tie and jacket. And when that would happen, he'd yell out in another kind of voice, We're free! We're free! You see, to him, he was populating the world with more ancestors. And that's why he called it God's children, so it was a good thing. Oh, that is so vile. You're telling me. One time he was hanging something on the wall... He was standing on a small ladder, and I was underneath, when he said, Hi, hi, what an itch, and he started scratching his head. I looked up in time just to run away before it started snowing on me. When things like that happened, he'd laugh and start singing Christmas carols. Michal, that is so disgusting. Well, it sounds bad, but when it happens all the time, you get used to it. Besides, without his hair, mustache, beard, and dark suit, it wouldn't have been Mushka. What kind of hat did he wear? Mushka always wore a a black hat, uh, a dark suit, a white shirt, and a red tie. It was tradition from the old country. I never saw him wear anything else. And he had this thick hair, thick black hair. But you said he was about 70 years old. Yeah, didn't he have gray hair? Uh, Only in parts of his mustache and by the side of his ears. The rest of it was jet black, thick, coarse black hair that was matted down by his hat. When he took his hat off, if he ever did, his head looked like a big bowl. Didn't he ever cut it? No, no, his beard was down to the middle of his chest, and the hair on his head was everywhere and, and reached down to his back. Why didn't he cut it? Why didn't he use Charmin toilet paper? How the hell do I know? It was his hair. You think I was going to ask him for a book on bodily hygiene? I was a little kid. (laughs) To me, he looked like Moses. Moses with a grimace. And sometimes when we got really busy, uh, he'd tie his hair in a knot. But most of the time, it was everywhere. Uh, I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but he doesn't sound like the cleanest of individuals. Well, like I told you, Mushka wasn't dirty. He was dusty. And he had his own version of clean. I I don't know if I want to know what that means. Well, he had his own standards. If there was no coffee, it would be like the world just came to an end. 
But if there was two or three day old coffee left in a cup, that was okay. If there were no plastic forks, that was a disaster. But if he found a plastic fork on the floor, in a drawer, wherever, and had food crusted on it, well, things were okay because he'd scraped the old food off and to him, it was just like brand new. If there was bread around and it was moldy, he'd say God was making sure he was getting his penicillin. He'd scrape the mold off and stick it in the toaster. He had a stomach like a horse. I mean, this guy could eat anything. I never once saw him get sick. Anything he didn't finish would would be for later. It's for later. It didn't matter how long it took to finish it. Mushka would let nothing go to waste. Food would be hanging around for days and he'd still pick at it. And he had only two suits, one for the week and the other for the Sabbath. Uh, and he only had one pair of shoes and only a few shirts. How the hell did you know what was in his wardrobe? Well, easy. Each shirt had a stain in a specific spot. You knew what shirt it was by the stains on it. Uh, he sounds kind of unclean. I told you, he was own kind of clean, like with tissues. In any pocket you could find them, they were all over the place. He had a separate drawer for used tissues. What? Well, when he got done with wiping or blowing or cleaning or whatever, it would go in the used tissue drawer. Used tissue drawer? <laughs> yeah, you know, the drawer where you put all the used tissues. What the hell did he need a used tissue drawer for? Why didn't he just throw them out? Throw out tissues? Mushka wouldn't stop using a tissue or paper towel until it dissolved in his hands. He'd keep the old ones in the drawer from when he ran out of the new ones. That is, if he ever bought any new ones. Actually, he never bought new ones. Now that I think about it, it was the mothers of the little kids that went there that got him to use tissues and paper towels. Why did they buy him? Well, before the tissues and paper towels, he'd use these pieces of cloth, rags. In Yiddish, they're called shmatas. He'd use the same shmata to wipe his nose, dry out a coffee cup, clean up a spill. Uh, this is the same one. Until someone started buying him paper towels, he'd use the same rag for everything. So if you think about it, saving the old ones was a million times better than what he was doing before.